Yes, and you're very welcome along to Lou TV and LMFM Sport. We're here in the Centre of Excellence in Darbar, the home of Loud GA. And it's uh, the end of a quite remarkable week, I suppose, in uh, Loud GA circles. Uh, back on Monday, of course, came the news uh, that Mickey Hart had been appointed on a three-year term as the new Loud senior team manager. And he's brought his assistant, uh, Gavin Devlin, uh, on board with him as uh, well. It certainly took the GA world by storm. Massive news story all week. And that uh, story, I suppose, continues to roll on uh, now towards the end of the week. And I'm delighted to be joined here in the Centre of Excellence. Uh, first visit, I think, uh, to Darvor, certainly in this capacity anyway, to the new Loud senior team manager, Mickey Hart, and Gavin Devlin, his assistant. You're very welcome to County Loud, uh, both of you. Mickey, of course, you, know, you have family connections. Uh, your, your late brother uh, would have been in, in Knockbridge just out the road here from us, wouldn't he? Yeah, that's true and, and thank you all very much for the welcome we do definitely already feel welcome we're only here this morning and we're very happy to be here and yes of course Louth is a special place in my heart too because my brother Pete lived in Knockbridge you say for a good number of years and his, two, his wife Ethna and his two sons Fergal and Peter Bernard are still here so uh, they were big Tyrone supporters and I think now they'll share that with Louth. <laughs> so I mean football memories, Tyrone against Loud, more happy ones from your point of view than, than bad ones. Of course there was that near miss back in, in 06, the, the qualifier, I'm sure you remember those two games pretty well Mickey. I certainly do, um, I've always admired the quality of footballers that are in Louth um, and, and I know they're always very competitive and some very good teams over that particular decade you're talking about and we got through by the skin of our teeth in a very important uh, <laughs> game in, in a qualifier match and I think we had to go back to Navin and, and, and fortunate enough maybe an extra time there to get that game so um, yeah there's, there's, there's memories there and, and probably scary ones at the time. <laughs> well take us back now about 10 days when you stepped down as Tyrone manager how quick was Peter Fitzpatrick on the phone to you after that uh, announcement because obviously Loud were looking for a new manager Wayne Cairns uh, uh, hadn't been offered a new term so you were available so t take us through the chain of events that has led to you sitting here in front of us today. Yeah, there's a bit of a Usain Bolt job, I think. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Peter uh -huh. didn't waste any time, and um, you know I respect him for that. Uh, and in fact, I knew that he was a football man as well as an administrator now, and, and I knew he was energetic about what he wanted, and I knew that he had great ambition for what the, he wanted this county to achieve. And um, I was available, so I think the timing was excellent, perfect. So he, he sold out you pretty quickly. Of course he did, and I mean I know Peter from a number of years now, and I just respect him as a person. He's a man of, of real quality, and uh, I like what he does, and, uh, and definitely he, he, he just oozes enthusiasm. I remember him when he was managing as well, of course, for Louth, and a particular day that, that uh, we'll all remember, <laughs> and, and, and he, he has some good quotes from that day too. So did he offer you the jobs there and then, or did he tell you to go away and have a think about it? No, we had a conversation, and knew that he was working with his, his subcommittee to try and find somebody to manage Louth and he had a conversation with me and I had a, a good conversation with him and we were left to reflect on how we might develop that on. Mm -hmm. So he had to go back to his people and speak about it and I had to figure it out with my family and Gavin of course was crucial. If Gavin needed to be able to come with me to make this happen and I'm delighted that he has been able to do that. Mm, so then from that, from that situation uh, roll on a few days and how long did, then did it take you to make that final decision and get back to Peter to confirm that you were going to take the job? Well I suppose it only took a little more than a week you know because um, there were certain people last Sunday at the Ulster final almost had talk of it already so um, it's very hard you know not to be associated with, associated with any position that was coming up at that stage as well so you have to just you know be ready to act quickly because otherwise there's lots of rumours and stuff going about that, that are not good for anybody. Mm. And I mean needless to say as well I'm sure you had probably other offers other plenty of other offers as soon as you stepped down from Tyrone a manager of your status and all that you've achieved Mickey I'm sure that phone was hopping for a few days. Well we'll put it like this there were a few inquiries all right you know but uh, I just I knew that Peter was the first man I talked to and I would always keep my word with him. I told him I'd give him my word and, and I did and he was true to his word. So, you know, that's why I'm sitting here today and, and I'm looking forward to getting to work with the Louth players who want to play for Louth, who want to commit to what's required to be the best they can be. And um, ability is great and we love people with ability, but I love people even more who have commitment and who have heart and who have real drive and who want to put pride back into the Louth jersey. Because that's more important. If they want to put pride into the Louth jersey, then they've got to work hard enough to be able to do that. And if they do that, together with Gavin and myself, we will make them better footballers. Mm. And that's the way we look at it. We want people to improve, to get to a new level, to, to just 
take on this challenge of you know, making the people of Louth proud of them and making the people of Louth proud to go out and support them. Because that's what it's all about. We play this sport and we're involved in this sport. Yes, we'd love to win things, and, but I see that as a bonus. It's about lifting people's spirits, and I think that's, that's the more important thing. And to people to have that energy within themselves, that know that hard work is always a good thing to do. And if you get real good results and real good outcomes, whether that's brilliant, but you're still making yourself a better person, you're still giving the people of your county something to be really proud of. Mm. And that's really what our challenge is right now. Mm. Obviously, low doc things are at a bit of a low ebb at the minute. Relegation to Division 4 of the league, only one competitive win all season during 2020. That you know The stats don't lie, Mickey. You're coming from a situation where you've, what, you've won three All-Ireland, six All-Stars, you've been in All-Ireland finals, very much the opposite end of the scale to where they are at the moment. Some people would think you're a bit mad taking on this job, but you don't see it obviously that way. No, not at all. I don't see it that way at all. And, and I mean, like, often you find the teams are in places where they know they're better than that. Mm. And I think that is true here too. So it's about discovering why are we here right now and how do we start the journey back out of this place. Mm. So I think that's a lovely challenge. It's a challenge for all of the players. It's a challenge for me and Gavin. It's a challenge for a commitment and an energy and, a, and a something vibrant that we need to give to this. And, and yes, the football skills are important. I tell you that all the time. But the most important thing is people who want to do it for the right reasons. People who want to come to training, enjoy looking forward to coming to training, enjoy what they're doing at training, that it's no chore. If it becomes a chore for anybody, then they shouldn't be there. They want to come here because I love being here. I love being in the company of players who are representing my county. I'm building a team spirit and a rapport between everybody that's involved in that. Recognising that people off the field who put a serious work into making this happen on the field and, and to be grateful to them. So I think it's all about being in this together and appreciating what everybody has to offer to the out, overall outcome. And we, we are glad to give our energy to be part of that. Mm. Gavin, we'll just bring you in here for a second. Delighted to see that you have the loud crest on your chest. Now, you're an hard bow man. Tell me a bit about your, your walking relationship. You, you've known Mickey, obviously, a long time now at this stage. Yeah, I've been with Mickey quite a while now, from our playing days right through now to the coaching. I was with him there for eight years with the throne set up and some lovely days with the throne. And, um, but I think it was time that we moved on to another challenge and there's no better place than coming here to Louth. You're definitely coming in with a clean slate. Tell me, how much do you know about Loud Football, club football now? Because obviously now you're going to have to, the first job will be to assemble a panel. How, what's, what steps, now, what's the first steps now you have to take? Yeah, well, we've been working away this last week on, on, on the setup and, you know, with the, the Loud Leaf games last year and uh, they won one against Down, but uh, the first five games previous to the lockdown were very competitive and all, and maybe far the last one against Leitrim, but... Um, and then after that, the, the, the game against Cork after the lockdown, which they had to travel down the morning of the game. And in the first half of that game, they were very competitive, although the scoreline at the end suggests something different. And then they beat down the last league game, the, the Longford game, the championship was a game that they could have, they were very competitive in. So they're not that far away, although there's got to be seen. The scoring averages, we just checked that they've been scoring up to eight, uh, 14 points per game, which is, you need to be scoring more than that, and they've been conceding roughly around 18 points per game, which is a wee bit too much. So... Obviously, there's work to be done, and, mm. and we're just looking forward now to get it and get at it. Now, the likes of training, strength, and conditioning—that's obviously a big part of the inter-county game. How how do you think you're going to approach that end of end of things? Yeah, well, we, we, Francis has shown us the, the the setup we've had around Derby, and it's a fantastic setup. We've come from one a fantastic setup in Kirkby in our own county, and this is second in as well. So the facilities isn't a problem. The gym and inside is absolutely tremendous now. And, it's a very important aspect of the game, getting players to the physical level, that they need to be able to compete against yeah. the best team. So, uh, look, really just looking forward to getting at it now. Um, it's good to get today's day over and getting out and focusing on what really, really matters, and that's out on the pitch. Yeah, Mickey, just back to you. Your, the, the panel that you're going to assemble, um, are, are you going to bring in other, anybody else onto your management team, or how are you going to Are you going to contact clubs uh, maybe su with suggestions of players maybe that you want to have a look at? Well, look, we're going to look into the people who have been there, played for Lowe this year, people who haven't been playing for whatever reason for the last year or two, and see how many of them are interested in coming to trial matches. We'll look at people who are under 20 last year, maybe over that age now, maybe some, you know, to make sure we have enough players to have trial games. Uh, we'll work on that with the county board when the time is right and they're happy that it's good enough to do this. Um, then we'll be sending out the message through the county board, those who have the contacts with the players that we want to invite into trials. And for those who come, 
we will give them every chance to see what they can do right now and we'll, we'll, we're not going to be definitive on it if there's maybe people who haven't been at the level of fitness that they'd like to be at or we know we'd be capable of getting to a higher level then it's going to be initially I'd imagine there'll be a preliminary panel picked mm. and we'll work with them and then the door will always be open for some people if they're just a little bit behind at the moment and have the desire to get up to the level required then you know we have a very open mind about this and we want people who are prepared to work and, and give their, all their energy to the, to the Louth cause. Mm. Just looking at the first games that you'll be in charge, it's going to be a truncated National League uh, season. It'll be worked out on a geographical basis, as far as we know. I think that's to be approved over the weekend. Uh, but the pressure will be on right from the start to try and obviously get a run going in and get out of Division 4 as soon as possible, Mickey. Well, absolutely. I mean, pressure, yes. Call it pressure. Call it uh, something that will drive us on, you know, in pressure. When people talk about pressure, they almost think that uh, this is that you're always under pressure. I don't believe I'm under pressure. I, I love pressure. Mm. I love the idea that this is important. If it wasn't important and you and you know and you, you had no sense of this is something that's a challenge in, then you really shouldn't be at it. So mm. I like the idea that there's going to be a challenge. Why would it not be, you know? Challenges are there to be met head on and I want the players that are going to be working with us to say, this is good. This is a challenge. We have to raise our game and, and let's bring it on. Mm. You're looking ahead then to the Championship. You saw what happened last week, the beauty of the Provincial Championships, Tipperary winning down in Munster, Cavan doing likewise in Ulster. But the, the Leinster Championship, Mickey, a different animal. Dublin, what's your thoughts on the Leinster Championship? Um, does it need a shake-up or, or wh wh how are you going to approach the Leinster Championship? <coughs> well, I know, no, but it's, it's too much to speculate. Because everybody knows that Dublin are ahead of everybody else, not only in Leinster, but in the country. So, yes, they're a serious force at the minute. But they are what they are right now. 10 or 15 years ago, they weren't that, mm. that uh, powerhouse. Uh, so, things change. And, you know, there will be a levelling off. And when that levelling off comes, we want Louth to be as close to the top part of that levelling off as, as can be. And that's our ambition. Mm. We're not going to set wonderful targets and goals that are unrealistic. We want people to just get better at what they're doing. And as they do that, uh, in, in a cumulative sense, if you like, then they're going to get better all along. So we want to keep raising the bar, however slightly, a bit at a time, because it's, it's not really sensible to look at anything else. Let's talk about the present time, in a month's time, two months' time. Who do you meet? Where do you meet them? What development or progress have we made? That's what it's about, about assessing, reviewing, adding value and going on. So it's, 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 a, it's a work in progress. Mm. And of course the Talton Cup, that's uh, likely to be uh, inaugurated this year or the coming year, uh, Mickey. So that's, a, that's another target, obviously, that you'll have to try and get a run going in that competition. Yeah, get a run going that or else be good enough not to be in it at all. Mm. Yeah. And see, see, see where it takes you. Yeah. And of course, here in Loud, the other big thing apart from matters on the field, the new stadium award for that. Um, we're all hoping perhaps your appointment now will give that, give the whole draw thing an, an extra bounce. Now the draw is coming up on the 4th of April. So obviously you're, you're well aware of Loud's fundraising efforts. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's part of the whole ambition that I saw in Peter and the committee that he was working with to invite us in here and the committee that he works with at an entire county level. There's ambition here on both fronts. There's ambition to get the stadium up and going. There's ambition for the team to be better too, better fit to, you know, bring people into that stadium. And we would love to be part of making that dream come true. So yes, I hope that there's a real good lift and support for the efforts that are being made for people to generate the income that's necessary to make this happen. This is a very collective thing for all of the people in the GAA family in Laos. Um, we want to be part of helping that along. Mm. Just back to you, Gavin. Um, I suppose in Toronto, the, 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 the situation is that, you know, in panels the last few years, you've been adding one or two and the little, small little changes from year in, year out. You're coming into Loud now where it's a, you're working with a whole new group of players. Uh, how do you think that's going to work from your point of view? Well, that's the work that we've got to get out straight away. That's the difficult part of it. Um, when, we, when we get our panel finalised, then it'll be down to the nuts and bolts of the game, which will come easy to us. But as, as Mickey has said already, um, the, the important that you, you're asking the, the league and the structure of the league in 2021 for that for, is, is out of our remit whatever the powers be to say is, is one thing but we have immediate challenges ahead we want to create a family environment straight away a good culture around, around the group and make this team better those are the challenges that we'll be focusing on straight away not looking at the league we'll take it game, as game, as, uh, game by game as it comes along but we have immediate targets straight away that we need to be focusing on and that'll be our work
Mm. And Mickey, back in your own county, Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar, uh, they were ratified earlier in the week uh, at our press conference, I think, last night. Some nice words, I think, they had for yourself last night at the press conference. Well, I haven't got time to read them yet, <laughs> but, uh, but um, yes, yeah. and, and I, I wish both of them well. I've sent messages to both of them and said I hope that they continue to be very successful in Tyrone, and that would be great because... Out of two things, I'd be very happy about them. Yeah. Just back to Loud, you're also looking after the under 20s. How important is that link between that level and senior and trying to bring as many of those under 20s into the senior setup? Maybe somewhere that Loud have been falling down on in recent years. Well, we are going to actually we are going to formulate the people that are going to look after this. We haven't got all our team together yet, but myself and Gavin are considering that at the moment. We will be working with somebody closely who will sort of take responsibility by and large for creating the environment where the 20s can be seen as well and we'll certainly be there to help them and oversee what's going on with them and we're only too glad to give them whatever hand we can uh, but the fact of the matter is our prime objective at the minute is to get the senior squad together that we want to make the best they can possibly be and we will put, we will put all our effort largely into that where they'll be able to give some assistance when we put the person in place that's going to have sort of key responsibility for the 20s, we'll be certain to be there to support them and be with them. But this is a job of work that's most important is to get this senior team up to the highest possible level it can be. And this will take a lot of effort on our part. We want to be able to commit fully to that effort and give some of our time, yes, to supporting the younger players. Because the younger players are so important. This is, this is a, a job for now and for the future. So yes, the 20s are a seriously important element of what we're doing here, but we will be focusing for now on the seniors and helping another person who will be spearhead what the 20s can do. By the sounds of it, Mickey, you've lost none of your enthusiasm. After all these years of management, it, you, you certainly sound as if you're up for this challenge. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, just, it's the way I am. Yeah, I don't think that you take on any of these things casually. I mean, it's about just bringing energy to where you're at. And I've always told people many, many times, there's only two things in life you can do, to be an energy giver or an energy sapper. And I don't really want to much be around sappers. I like being with energy givers and energy people who bring energy to where they're at. And we have that choice all the time. We can either bring and give energy to the company we're in, or we can drag it down. And, and people need to recognize that very quickly and come here with a pep in their step. Come here to say, I am enjoying being here. I enjoy this company. I'm not just here to play football, I'm here to enjoy the company I'm in, to enjoy the county I represent and to give the best of myself and you know that's it. I, I, I don't know, with the time that I haven't got that kind of notion and that kind of energy I should be away and definitely get the slippers <laughs> but I'm not getting them just yet. Well I'll tell you we look forward to the three years, at least three years Mickey of your, your, your reign in charge here in Louth and I think everybody listening in and watching in today will be certainly re-energised all Loud Gales by what we've heard from Mickey Hart and his assistant Gavin Devon. There we leave it here on Louth TV and LMFM Sport, new Loud senior team manager Mickey Hart and his assistant Gavin Devon. Best of luck both of you in the years ahead. Thank you.